so I'm going to delete that. And then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to type a command that I routinely use in all my scripts. It's just used to start up your Grease Monkey script. Uh, Grease Monkey injects a user JavaScript uh, after the web page loads all of its stuff. So what I'm going to do is call the window object and we're going to call the function set timeout and case does matter so that capital T there make sure you have it um, and then I'm going to type main and 10 and you can use so what these mean is main tells it that in this amount of milliseconds so 10 milliseconds it's going to call a function that I'm calling main you can use whatever function name you want I'm just because of old coding habits I'm just using main so, and then go down here and create your function main, otherwise it'll crash on you. So function main, and then we'll leave it empty because we aren't going to pass it anything. And then give it your brackets, and however you, you use your syntax is fine. I'm just doing it the way I know. Alright, so function main, and then just to make sure we know it's running, uh, if you remember from the first demo, we did console log. We're going to do that again. So we're going to tell the console object that we want to log into it. So we're using the log function. There's also other ones like air, like console air, and some other some other ones you can use. But I, I generally just use console log. So we're going to type to something like scouting report script started. And I'll generally leave this up here for my programs until I get ready to to publish them because it just lets me know when things are started and it helps me debug because if, if you don't see that that line whenever the script runs you know that it never started so so that is a is, is a good place to save and we'll just check our script so before you before you refresh up here go ahead and bring up the firebug and make sure your console's on it should be enabled and then refresh and then you'll see it will log what we told it to log so scouting's report script started. So, and then you can always do comments. So, uh, starting script or something. So, and it's good to use comments just so anybody else who comes along afterwards can kind of figure out what your script's trying to do. All right. So now we're going to actually start writing some code that actually does some useful stuff. So um, to do that, we need to know what we need to talk to. Right, by that I mean we need to know the names of the elements we're going to work with. So if you don't know about document object model already, you may want to pause this and just do a quick search and read up on it. Uh, basically, it's it's this tree structure here. So this body tag here has children, the, these these three divs, and there may be some other hidden ones that you can't see. So I could I could tell the script that I want to go to this body tag, and then I want to go to its second child, which would take me over here to this element, which is div id body container. And and you can just work your way through this document object model, kind of like that. So um, we need to so I guess. It, instead of working our way down the tree, it's better to start already somewhere inside the tree. So we're, we're going to be working with these scouting bars. So let's go ahead and just see what what they already have on them. And what we're looking for is special tags. Um, so a div isn't really a special tag. It's not very unique. As you can see, there's lots of divs. So if we search for, for, for divs, we're going to find lots of them. Um, you can search for IDs, and that's really the, 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 the easiest thing to use. However, as you see, our element here does not have any IDs. It does have two classes, though, which are also going to be useful. However, if you have an ID, it's, it's really nice. You can just search by the ID, as there should only be one ID available in, in the whole page. So it'll be the only one there. Um, so but for our element we're gonna have to use the class instead and so we have a choice of two classes here 
we have radian bar fill and radian bar fill 60 to grab this element. Now, the reason we want to grab this element is because if you look in here, it has width, and then you see this 51% here. That 51% is the, is, the, is the number that we're going to place in the scouting bar. And if you come down here and open up some of these other trees, you'll see that they have their, their, their unique numbers. And you'll see up here, whenever I'm over one of the elements, they're turning blue up here. That's just telling you which ones I'm on top of. So, so this middle blocking um, div has a, a width of 60. And then the last one here has a width of 42. So we need to grab all three of these and assign them to the proper, the proper place. So the first, the first part of our script here is just going to be getting the, the numbers. And we'll worry about where to put them in a second. So to do that, um, we're going to use this class name here. And we're, we, can, we have two choices, like I said. You can use radian bar fill or radian bar fill 60. However, if you go down to the other one, you see this one does not have a radian bar fill 60. It has a radian bar fill 80. Meaning you're, you're probably not going to want to use the second class. You're going to want to use the first one because it's common between all three of the elements we want to work with. Um, yeah, just so you know that 60, 80, and 60 is used to change the color. So um, this, if, if you can use it to do some other fun stuff later if you wanted to. So anyway, um, you can check that there's no other, I guess, let's do a quick search. So we're going to call the document model. Documents, and then get elements by class name. Again, case is very important. And then uh, it was rating bar fill. And you can use double quotes or single quotes. And if we run it, we'll see that we have a total of five of those. So we just need to figure out where the other two are so we don't accidentally grab them as well whenever we search for it. So um, from prior experience, I know that they're already down here. As you can see, energy turned blue. And on this last one, morale turned blue. So, um, and these are ordered by the, the order that they appear in the page. So what this means is we need to grab the first three of them. So just keep that in mind. All right. So let's go ahead and put this into our script. So um, you can use a variable or a constant here. I guess I should zoom in when I'm typing. So a variable or a constant. I'm going to use constant just because our location isn't going to change. So constant, and then for your for your uh, constant's name. Um, you can use like uh, a descriptive variable like bar location, player, uh, stat, whatever. So I'm, I'm going to just call it bar location. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it A. Um, again, if, if you use descriptive names, you help out future coders just kind of figure out what's going on in your code. So, and then we're going to do document, spelled correctly, of course. So we call it document object because we're going to search in it first and then get elements by class name and I'll go over here before you can see the rest of it and then if you remember it was rating underscore bar underscore fill and then make sure you put the semicolon at the back end otherwise it'll get problems all right, and then um, a good thing you can do to check and see what your commands are finding is you can log them. Just console log and then just say bar location, no quotes, because we're calling the variable, or I guess in this case the constant, and not actual text. So if I do that and I save this, and we go in here, so when I refresh this, it'll clear out our console once it loads. There it goes. All right, and you see our scouting report started, and then our bar location, very constant, contains five elements. 
as you notice, it, this is an array. There are five different elements. So, um, if if we, if as you'll see, if we call, and I don't call if it stays in here. Yeah. Okay. So it's not in there. Okay. So if if instead we put bar array zero, it would get the first one. Uh, JavaScript starts its numbering at zero important to note so it's zero one two three and so on so so if we just save that and run it instead of showing us five of them it's going to show us the first one this time when we refresh it so and oops if I scroll up over here on, and I hover over this you'll see that the overall bar is turning blue because I'm hovered over it <laughs> 